In a recent gaming PC that we built here at Tech yes City, we came into a problem with DDR4 memory. And the funny thing was, was that this was brand new sticks of memory and half the parts that we used in that gaming PC were used. And this ended up giving us the problems where the PC wouldn't start. However, in today's video, I'm going to go over what I believe is the most common problem when it comes to building a new PC in relation to faulty hardware. So let's get onto how you can diagnose this problem yourself. And also if you've bought some faster memory as well, say for instance, it says on the box that it's 3,200 megahertz, how you can make sure you're getting what you paid for right after this sponsor spot. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon. BFTYC. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Right here, we've got a kit of 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, 3200 megahertz. Now, when I was building my PC, it just wouldn't boot. And I initially thought, okay, perhaps my CPU isn't supported on the BIOS support list for the motherboard that I bought because it's a kind of a unique CPU. Not many people use this. It's called the Ryzen 5. 4500 and I'm fitting it on a B450 motherboard. But then I looked on the website, it said it supported it absolutely fine. So I knew I had nothing to worry about there. I didn't have to update my BIOS because sometimes if you buy uh, PC components, especially on AM4, that's AMD's Ryzen socket, you may need to update your BIOS to get the system to work. And that's a separate issue on its own. But in this case, we knew all our hardware should work from the get go but it didn't. And in this case, I then took out one stick of memory and our computer still wouldn't boot. So what I did then was I changed the stick of memory over since we had two of these sticks of memory and then our computer started to boot up. Now, this is the good thing about getting two sticks of memory is that you can quickly find out if one of the sticks of memory is faulty. Now, if you are out there in the world and both these sticks of memory don't boot and they're both faulty, then you will have to, I believe you've got some of the worst luck in history. I've never heard of someone coming into a kit of memory where both the sticks are faulty to the point where the computer won't boot. So if, that, if you're that person, <laughs> then do drop a comment because I, man, I, uh, and just warn your friends as well. Don't ever come to the casino with me because yeah, you, that guy's got some of the worst luck in history, but most of the time, if you've got a faulty stick of memory, you're gonna have two sticks of memory, one of those sticks is going to work, and then you can quickly switch that other stick in and you can diagnose whether the stick is faulty or not. Now, in today's video, we've got a B450 motherboard which doesn't give out any BIOS code readings, and usually if you've got more expensive motherboards, they'll come with this BIOS code readout too, and that can be very handy for diagnosing problems because it'll give you an error code which you can then go on the internet and look up and say it'll tell you exactly what the problem is and why the computer won't boot. But in this case, we've got budget memory. It's a budget PC build. We've got a budget motherboard and it doesn't have that BIOS code readout. So in this case, we've got to go to manually changing things around and swapping out hardware and seeing what works. So in this case, we've got the two sticks of memory and if you're into PC gaming, you should always have two sticks of memory in a PC to get the best performance possible out of your system. And also, it really isn't much of a difference between two sticks versus one stick at the same capacity of memory. Say 16 gigabytes, you get two by eight gigabyte sticks versus one 16 gigabyte stick. They shouldn't really vary in cost a whole lot. They should be roughly the same price. So always make sure you're getting two sticks of memory when you uh, buy a computer, you can, of course you can get four sticks of memory too, but if you're diagnosing faulty hardware when it comes to RAM, just know that it's the most common fault on a PC when it comes to building new hardware, and also it's very easy to quickly diagnose if you have more than one stick of memory. So in this case, we've got that one stick of memory, we can send this back to Amazon and mark it as faulty, and then get in a new kit of memory, which is exactly what we did here, and both the sticks of memory work absolutely fine so we're now good to go and finish off our gaming pc build which is exactly what we did so we just identified our first problem when it comes to memory there's also one more problem that exists and just because memory may boot it may actually not be working properly 
And this is where especially another common problem when it comes to building a new PC and something I've run into just as much as faulty memory is XMP profiles that don't actually work at their advertised speeds. So what I mean by this is when we buy this memory, usually it'll have a speed on it. Say for instance, in this case, it's 3200 megahertz. That's an XMP profile that the manufacturers tested themselves. They verified that both these sticks of memory in this kit of memory will run at 3200 megahertz. And so in this case, once we got the working kit from Amazon, we sent the faulty one back, this indeed did, we went into the BIOS. So when we boot up our PC, we hit either delete or F2 on our keyboard, and then we'll get into a screen where we can navigate with our arrow keys to a section called load XMP profile. We then hit enter, lock that in, and then we hit F10, save and exit, and we get to Windows, and then we can hit Control Alt Delete and go to Task Manager, Performance, left click on our memory, and verify that our memory speeds are there. In this case, 3200 megahertz is working absolutely fine on this memory. And one thing that we can do further on top of that is just simply go and type in the left uh, bottom left hand corner, Windows Memory Diagnostic, left click, restart our computer, make sure it passes this whole test fully, and then we are confident that our memory is no longer a problem. There's also another uh, application that you can use called Memtest86+, Plus, which does a really good job of thoroughly testing memory, and it does um, also various different types of tests that you can run. I found personally that the Windows Memory Diagnostic app actually does a very quick and efficient job. I've never had memory that's passed this test and then gone on to quickly fail after passing this test. So that's a good thing about the Windows Memory Diagnostics tool. It's very quick and easy to use and it'll give you some pretty accurate results. However, that's this memory out of the way. It's called Clev here. It's a brand that's sold locally. It's very good value for money, at least when you buy it on Amazon and you get that Amazon 30 day guarantee. What we've got here is now two separate sticks of Corsair 16 gigabytes of memory that I bought off the used market. Now, both of these sticks exhibit their own unique weird behavior. And so one of the sticks will actually not boot up at all. And so what I did here was I then had to take apart the memory, which I do not recommend if you've got warranty. If you've got warranty and memory either doesn't work at the first problem we just mentioned or the second problem we're gonna go into, then just send it back to the manufacturer, get a new kit of memory that works and call it a day. But if you've got used memory and you wanna do what I'm doing here, you can have a go at it. However, looking at this next problem, especially when it comes to getting what you paid for with speeds, we've got here two 16 gigabyte sticks of memory from Corsair. This is 3200 megahertz, just like the Clev stuff. And what we had here was one stick of memory that booted up absolutely fine. But as soon as we locked in our 3200 megahertz profile from the BIOS, we then started to boot into Windows and it gave us problems where it just wouldn't even get into Windows. And the little circle here was starting to spin and give out uh, issues. So basically if you have memory that boots the Windows fine and you've just installed it, and then you lock in those XMP profiles, those high speeds in the BIOS, and then it fails to get to Windows, then it may be one of two issues. The memory may not work at its advertised speeds, which you can then refund and uh, get a different kit of memory in or exchange it, or it may be that your CPU is either old or it just simply won't support those speeds. So this one's actually a little bit more difficult to diagnose. So if you are coming into issues where one of the sticks, and remember back to our two sticks of memory, where one of our sticks boots into Windows at 3200 megahertz, and then we change it over to the other stick that does work, but then when we try to lock in those settings and it doesn't boot to Windows, then that's a clear cut case example of one of the sticks of memory not working at the advertised speeds. So what you can do there is you can then return that stick of memory, get a new one. However, it can also be another problem, and that is your CPU. Especially if you've got a Ryzen first generation CPU, a lot of these uh, CPUs struggle to work with even 3200 megahertz. If you've got say a Ryzen 3600 or a Ryzen 5, 5600, those CPUs will work absolutely fine with 3200 megahertz and a lot of times absolutely fine with 3600 megahertz. However, if you start going to speeds like 4000 megahertz, you can come into issues with the CPU simply not supporting those memory speeds. And so that's an issue of the CPU maxing out at a certain memory speed 
and you not being able to get your memory running at those advertised speeds. So in other words, the memory could be absolutely fine. It's just that you cannot physically get your CPU to support those higher memory speeds because it just won't get there. And in fact, if you're thinking, well, can't I warranty my CPU? Well, actually you can't because AMD and Intel, they generally don't guarantee those higher memory speeds past a certain level. Though we're saving the best till last, and that is with the used memory that we got here, one of the sticks did not boot up at all. However, what we then decided to do was to clean this memory down because I believe that this memory may have actually come from a flood damage PC because it was giving out problems. It looked a little bit dirty when we got it. And after cleaning it, and we just gave it out a clean, we took the heat sinks off the memory. And if you do this, be careful because you may void your warranty. But after doing this, we then put the memory back in the system and it booted up absolutely fine. So if you've got used memory and it's out of warranty and there's nothing you can do, then this may be something that you may wish to do, clean up your parts and see if they then work after cleaning them up. So I'm really happy that after cleaning up this memory, it now works absolutely fine. And I'm actually running the test right now to check that there's no issues in Windows memory diagnostics, even at the 3200 megahertz rated speeds. And with all that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also let us know in the comments section below if you've got any questions or any experiences of your own relating to DDR3, DDR4, or DDR5 memory. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. Just like this question of the day, here, which comes from, how are you doing guys? And they ask, okay, why does it break my laptop? Every time I try to restart it or turn it on, it just takes a long time. I just upgraded my hard drive to an SSD like a week ago, and it's slower than my hard disk drive now, crying emoji. And they're talking about the Windows 10 optimization guide that we did. And this is the first that I've heard where the Windows optimization guides we do here at Tech Your City would cause any problems like that related in the comments. Whenever we make our Windows optimization guides, we thoroughly test them out and make sure that you're getting better performance than you did before. And I believe in this case, it's either one of two issues with this laptop. I believe something has or is starting to go faulty. And believe me, you can get faulty SSDs too. And that's one of the symptoms of a faulty SSD is actually a PC that's really slow. Not just that, it could be a fake SSD, which we have covered in a video here, where if you get a fake SSD in that they advertise one terabyte, but it's truly only 120 gigabytes, then once you go close to that 120 gigabyte mark, the whole system just gets completely sluggish, extremely slow, and you're not getting what you paid for there. So you should be very upset if that's the case. I think you may have gotten a fake so hopefully that can get fixed in due time. And uh, do check out the video if you wanna uh, check out what happens when you get a fake SSD. Anyhow guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.